news you can use. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Uh, yesterday morning, the federal government announced that the national forbearance uh, agreements that they had in place, or actually not agreements, it was a mandate by the federal government, set to expire April 1, so 40 some days from now, 45 days from now, um, is all of a sudden going to be extended 16 more months. So mid to late summer of 2022. Uh, the effect this is gonna have on you guys as investors, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, but <clears throat> essentially what it's gonna do is put people who are already not making payments and give them another 16 months to live for free without getting their home foreclosed on. Now these only apply to um, GSE loans, government service entity loans, FHA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, uh, those types of loans. Uh, regular loans that are either non-conforming, which conforming means they're a GSE loan, a government guaranteed loan. <clears throat> um, those, are, those are covered by this provision, but other loans can still be foreclosed on. There's no forbearance agreement in effect. Um, <clears throat> what this is going to mean for you guys, there's about 16 million loans that are in this subject pool. And, you know, we were expecting a big flood of foreclosures coming April, you know, in April, basically. Um, because I, I can just about guarantee you the vast majority of these people who are in forbearance, who have not been making their payments, have not been putting that money aside to make those payments. They don't have the money. They've spent it, you know, done whatever with it. <clears throat> those houses are going to get foreclosed on. Now, all of those homes are going to have essentially squatters living in them until August or September of 2022. It's, good. it's a disaster for the country. It's a disaster for the housing business. Um, <clears throat> it does a couple of things. First of all, by keeping that product off the market, and by off the market, I mean it can't be foreclosed and put back on the market, be available as housing stock for first-time home buyers primarily, uh, because most of those own those loans are for first-time home buyers. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to continue to drive up prices for first-time home buying stock, such as they are, such as they're available all over the country. It's going to make it hard for people who want to get off the sidelines, living in an apartment living in grandma's basement and get them to move into a house because there's just not enough housing stock available. We're short something like 11 million houses for people, first time home buyers who want to buy a house. Um, and so typically one of these events has occurred, you know, they make, the government's always shocked when it happens, right? It's like, oh, we didn't know it was going to happen. But if you look back historically, every seven to 14, seven or 14 years, the same stuff happens and there's always some big upheaval and it puts a bunch of product back on the market and it's just part of the process now. Well, they've gone in and they have um, inorganically, artificially upset the apple cart and everybody's kind of left, um, you know, holding their hat in the wind on this deal. Nobody, you know, we were all figuring that we're going to get our hands on a bunch of this housing stock that was going to not uh, be forbeared for, in other words, to uh, not, not foreclosed. <clears throat> and we were going to be able to get our hands on that over a period of the next year or two, which would in turn do two things, drive down houses, pri housing prices a little bit. Um, and make more product available, which would create more froth and more demand in the market. Not that there isn't enough demand. Um, and it'd be better for everybody, but <clears throat> they're going to artificially prop this thing up. They don't have a plan for how to take care of it uh, when this thing is over. Um, the, the, the damage is probably in the range of, at this point, we're looking at, I think I calculated yesterday, $540 billion of a loss that the government's going to have to have. That is bigger than the capitalization of Fannie and Freddie together. So, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. This is one of the times when I, my crystal ball says, I have no freaking idea because when the government can come in at the 12th hour like that and just totally upset the apple cart, you really don't know what's going to happen. In the meantime, once again, there is some small opportunities for us out there because there is still a big demand for housing stock and not enough supply. Now, builders are trying to 
make up, catch up with it. We talked the other day about modular homes, the Google and Facebook have started this company called Factory OS, which is building modularized houses. Don't think mobile homes, think, you know, really nice looking condo type units um, that are built in pieces. Um, and, you know, if these guys are smart enough to look ahead and see that that's the future, that's probably a pretty smart bet. Uh, the reason they're doing it is because there's a big demand out there and there's going to be a big demand. So um, people don't want to live in the cities. They don't want to live in apartments. They don't, you know, they want to move from cities to rural, from cities to suburbs, suburbs to rural. And, you know, they're just, they're getting pushed out and there's no housing stock. So um, expect prices to continue going up this year. As long as rates stay cheap, uh, houses uh, will still be uh, hard to, to find for the average person. Now, in our business, we are finding just the opposite, and it's a it's the weirdest thing. A lot of those people who are in forbearance, uh, a lot, a small amount compared to the 16 million that we're talking about. But you know, a couple of million of these people are actually responsible citizens, and they're doing something about it. Just because they have the ability to not pay doesn't mean that they're going to ignore that fiscal financial responsibility. And so, you know, we're seeing huge amounts of people responding to our Facebook ads. I saw a comment on uh, one of the, um, somebody posted on Apprentice uh, Facebook the other day um, that lead cost for like 2020 was $12 a lead and it's dropped to like four and they're getting flooded with leads. We're seeing the same thing. A lot of a lot of sellers out there. A lot of people uh, want to move, and it's not just this kind of housing stock. Remember, there's death, divorce, taxes, bankruptcy, job loss, medical issues, family issues, and having to move. Those are life events that have always created motivated sellers. Those things go on in a good economy, bad economy, COVID, no COVID, you know, whatever. And um, we're seeing that kind of pent up amount of sellers that want to sell, and then there's of course this huge cliff of buyers who want to buy so it still looks good it's not exactly what we hoped would happen which was kind of a, a moderating of prices in the market we'd love to see prices drop 10 to 20 percent doesn't look like that's going to happen so um you know it, it's tbd it's to be determined but it does create some great opportunities for you guys out there so uh keep your eyes and ears open and uh, we'll as always we'll keep you uh, in the loop as we hear see things and, and we see them and um, we'll let you know what we see.